Hello, everyone. <clears throat> I have to ask an important question before we start. What is the best cereal? What is the best cereal? What is your favorite cereal? I guess is really what I'm asking. Because the stuff I used to buy, I either used to buy Reese's Puffs or Pops. I love these Pops. I wouldn't eat them now because they'd probably make me sick after like two bites, but I love these. I never got these growing up. I think my mom did give in and buy them for me one time, but that was it. And this is just to demonstrate anything around your house that's made of this, you can use to make miniatures with. So I don't want to rip the cardboard. Well, at least to help it. I don't want to rip the cardboard. <clears throat> Preserve as much as possible. Oh, look at those empty, empty, empty calories. Delicious. And again, I'm just using my knife so that I don't make a template that way. You'll have a nice straight line to measure everything else off of, like a regular film camera, which I like. I like the production look of that. So hopefully it's it's focusing on that. All right, now I've got this. I've got these edges on here, right, where the fold was. So now I've got two big old sheets of material plus spare. So... Yeah, uh, just under an inch and seven eighths is my measurement here on the front, and this should be about the same. Yep. Who um, asked me to talk more in my videos, and I got people. Li but I'm trying to make it work. All right, so there is my first strip of cereal box cardboard at one and seven eighths. Watching in the future times. And if you're watching in the future times, comment. Let the arguments begin. Mark it. Um, I'm going to kind of line this up here on my template and mark it. If I didn't have my template, <clears throat> I would just measure it, right? I would do my math. The math would be on the... that line, so I can do some geometry. And that's going to be... There's my mirror images. If you cut inside the line, outside the line, the middle of the line, I can't add to it once I cut it, but I can make it smaller. So center, if you can be accurate, outside if you're worried about accuracy, and you can always sand it down. And this size, by the way, is <clears throat> hyper real scale accurate to 1 12th scale. Um, if you want to make yours a little bit bigger, because you think it would look better with a 6.5, 7 inch tall superhero figure, then do that. Literally just, if you're light about it, you can knock down the material. If you get rough with it, it'll tear it out. But you can just do some light sanding to smooth it. Yeah. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna retrace this, believe it or not, but I'm going to make it smaller. Okay. So I'm just gonna use my, this is my reference. And then I wanna retrace this but about the thickness of this material, smaller. And this is where you really want to be good with this cut because I want it to be consistent. Let's make sure, because something these could be a little bit off. Okay, so it is a little bit tight up here. <clears throat> Bam. Now, as long as I use this reference on all the sides, I will have consistent dimension. Which looks like it's pretty much... All right, and we're probably going to do this in two passes. I'm going to do this. I'm going to score this. I like styrene. There we go. Styrene is my friend. Cereal is my friend. All right, look at that. Look at that. Trace that. And now I'm going to lined with the other line. That's the song about the line cutting. Okay. Do do hap. 
happy little mailbox sides. <clears throat> now, sorry. What am I doing? There we go. Okay. Scraps. So now, if I put this here, that should sit. Yeah, it's just a little bit higher. Right, this is a little bit, this space down here is a little bit bigger than this space on the side. Actually, I think I want to super glue on this side. Just, and cardboard will tend to soak up super glue, so you'll probably have to put a little bit more than you think. All right, and this is where you got to be careful. Don't mess it up. Don't be suspicious, don't be suspicious. If you mess it up, you ain't moving it back. All right, so that is about a 64th of an inch misaligned. It's a little bit that way. That's okay. That's kind of why I overcut this, so there was a little bit of play in there, so that's okay. So I'm just trying to decide if I want to keep it that way. I think I do. <clears throat> so you can see with the edge I created when I glue this in, there will be a slight edge. This will be sticking out a little bit. That's what. That's how we can bring in the sanding. Or we can do some other detail adding tricks to hide those little overlapping seams. Or you can leave them alone if you like them. They look fine too that way. So, Or you can put a piece of wire to add that rounded piece that you get. The little uh, tubing edge that you get to reinforce the corners. You can do it with aluminum tubing too. We'll see where we go with this. You can get... Alright, I'm going to go ahead and put glue along my outer edge here. Not the whole thing. Just like a good section of it. And I'm gonna hold this down. This is where you gotta be a little bit patient. I am gonna wanna get in a hurry, but I shouldn't. And then I'm gonna spray it with the Insta Set. And I'm actually going to Put a little bit more glue in there. Just to, as like a binder. <clears throat> Buffer binder thingy dingy. Hopefully it doesn't glue through to the cardboard below. It might. <clears throat> Look at that. Super glue is amazing. And take this and start to kind of curl this cardboard. Kind of like you would a ribbon for like a present. Right? I'm just pinching it and letting it kind of curl like that. Just do what you're like. Try not to create a fold in there, right? It's really easy to create a crease or a fold with cardboard. Actually, let me show you. Okay, so now, pretty confident in that. Just gonna make sure I'm happy with the alignment. Deluxe arc, okay. I'm going to do this actually from the outside because then I can line it up better with the uh, outside edge. Now I'm going to spray. You can't see it. Sorry, my hand's covering it, but I'm just going to spray in there. <clears throat> And when I'm confident this is in a good spot, always cover your super glue too, even if you're going to use it again right away, just so the fumes don't get in your face. <laughs> Scrap. <clears throat> if you can kind of break an object down into different stackable layers of surface, flat surfaces and edge curves, you can reverse engineer that. <clears throat> Thank you guys all for being here again. Thank you for all the likes. Much appreciated. Let's people know there's something interesting to learn, watch, or laugh at. There we go. There we go. A little bit better. Sometimes it's just like... Let's check it here. So we've got this side. Yeah. Yep. And we've got this side. And we've got the front. And we roll that. We get the back. Guess what? I'm just going to use it. my line or the inside of my line excuse me inside of the line stay inside the line i would just worry that i would break these legs off trying to hold everything in place with the glue 
yes, like that. Just kind of work it back. Sharp line. This is a little cardboard trick. You don't have to do this with all of it, but I'm just going to go like this. Just going to drag my blade across it like that. <clears throat> so there's this little line there. See that? And then when I take this and I put it against a ruler as a buck, and then I do that, I get a nice, pretty sharp line on the other side. That's going to go up in there. So I'm a little off center here, so I'm going to just mark my line again a little bit tighter in. And in this case, I'm actually moving the piece with the blade too. There we go. Look at that. You stupid artist. At least that's how they sound sometimes. I'm also going to round the edges of my handle just a little bit. I'm going to go like this and just visually kind of align it. Like two passes, like that, and then I push hard. See that? Yep. So I'm going to put the super duper glue here. comes the messy part. Circumcise it. There we go. <clears throat> yes. We're going to tweeze this mailbox together. <clears throat> there we go. That's actually pretty much about how they look. That's pretty... Bled into the cardboard too much. Alright. <clears throat> Are you ready? Using spray paint because water-based paint would warp the cardboard. We just scratch built that in basically less than two hours. Half, so I'm following that with my paint just to get the most coverage in each swipe. It'll be still glossy when it dries, but that i'm not going to be able to put because it's a gloss paint i'm not going to be able to put the stickers on them tonight it's going to need to probably cure overnight the paint i used i was used rust-oleum brilliant blue gloss all right so i'm just going to do this very slowly by hand i'm probably just going to Cut the straight lines and then round over my corners with scissors. Oop, I was a little off there. That's okay. That's why I have five of them. I did that on purpose. The scissors, I think, are just fine. Did the same thing with my miniature dollar bills that I sell in my Etsy store. They are uh, heavily modified, but to the point where you can't really tell. The $100 bills, you can kind of tell if you look close, but the $1 bills, you can't. Also, it's not even close to a size you could real, use as real tender, and that's all the Secret Service cares about, which apparently is the people who are responsible for overseeing currency fraud. So, I actually have had postal employees buy my pre-printed uh, mail sheets. So I sell these too on my Etsy store. These are ones that I rebuilt of the boxes. So these are different. They're not perfectly to scale, but they I made them so they could fit as much as possible onto a sheet. So these are the envelopes. These are the small boxes, the medium, or the medium boxes, the large boxes, and the little clamshells. I sell these, and I've had two or three postal employees buy those for me and make them well to do the same thing. But it's going to be a little bit more difficult to wrangle. There we go. So if I just push it down in the center, and I'm just working the glue out to the edge. You do want to know... So sometimes we get stuck in that 
I want to learn the one thing the one way, not realizing we can learn that from other things. So that's kind of why I say that I haven't, that's why I haven't been super motivated to make like, it's the challenge of going back through all that, that it's the challenge of being a YouTuber. It's a lot of work, no matter what you do. Even if you just talk and have pre-recorded videos or pre or Im videos made of images that are already made, it's a lot of work, just the editing. So all of these decisions, these are or all of these things affect a lot of times what I do and what I talk about, what I have time to do. And I have to do something I'm interested in, otherwise I'll get bored too. I got to do something people are, are, I'm interested as well. So I'm going to grab this really brighty orangey color. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial so far. If you'd like to see everything you just saw in way more detail and uncut, go check out my live series, Art in Real Time, and it's episode 48, where I show you all of that over the course of about three and a half hours. And the part you're seeing now, which is the weathering and where I add graffiti, I go over in Art in Real Time, episode 49. Both live streams are fully available still in my public live streams playlist. Please check out my live streams if you're interested in seeing this in much longer format because I don't always have time to trim things down to the shorter format for folks like yourself. But I appreciate you being here. I hope you enjoyed it. And let me know what you think. Was this helpful? Should I have included more information? Should I have let it run longer? Do you think I'm a dork? Let me know in the comments below. Appreciate you for being here. Oh, and I always forget to ask people to like and subscribe. So if you like this enough and you've watched it this far, I think that's worth a like, right? Maybe subscribe? I don't know. What do you think Bender would do? Ta-da!